Yeah, and, and then RO water. I don't know if you have experience with that, but you hear about people drinking RO water. And I actually spent years drinking RO water, and I got so much crap in the comment section when I said mm-hmm. that because apparently there are studies out there that's saying that it it's – robbing nutrients from your body right because it's like it doesn't have it's not bound to anything it's just straight h2o so when you're drinking it it's binding to those nutrients and then you you, it's depleting from your body depleting from your body exactly some people say the same thing with plants that you shouldn't be using ro water into your medium because it's potentially robbing the plant of nutrients what do you think about that Anyone who watches me knows me and my and me and RO is a little bit of a touchy subject because I truly believe there's other methods before getting an RO machine. I think the RO machines are the or RO filters are the last thing we need, and the only time you pretty much need an RO filter right away is when you're maybe making concentrates. But in growing, there's so many other things that we can use to remove a lot of these things uh, that RO water they think is the number one thing that we all need. Like people go out and get RO machines because they don't want calcium spots from the humidifiers anymore. But you can literally buy little tablets that go inside your humidifier that remove that calcium. And it's just called a a demineralizer, I think they're called. Um, You can buy those. So you don't really need to put RO inside your humidifier. You can buy those, they're a lot cheaper. RO water wastes more water and and most of the time it wastes more water than usable water. So in places where water is very limited or, or, or water is very valuable, which it really is, you're, you're draining, you're throwing it all down the drain. So I think there's a lot of options out there that we should be looking at before we look at RO. And there's actually a good documentary online uh, about the drinking of mineral water. And it's that, and they were like what you were saying, they're saying that it is healthier for you to drink higher like uh ppm um, water your higher ec higher t- uh, tds to um uh, give you these minerals and stuff in your body and it is not safe like what you said or no, i shouldn't say not safe but it isn't not it isn't recommended to drink ro water because like exactly you said it is pulling away from you and i've said that with growing before i've, I've said that that i think if you are using ro water to to water seedlings or for your veg or to do this and that most tap water is all right unless like yeah okay you're in a well or you're in a place where the tap water is not even safe to drink and then if you're at a point where it's not even safe to drink then yeah it's probably not safe for your plants but if it's within that 200 maybe up to that 300 uh, ppm my opinion it seems to be pretty safe for going through veg going through seedling stage and going through my flower at least in my setup so i wasn't aware of the tablets that you mentioned i'll have to look those up uh, that that's pretty cool. I didn't even realize they had those. So I do yeah. run RO. Uh, okay. <laughs> cringe for you. Probably. Hey, hey, it's not, but, it's not uh, cringe. If you reuse the wastewater, <laughs> hook it up to your toilet, put it inside a reservoir and maybe use it outside or something. Right. Exactly. What I was just about to say is that Dago the hut, he was on one of my mm-hmm. podcast episodes before and he had mentioned that his, his drain line, right? That line that's the wasted yeah. water is going to, he's put it into a bucket and then using it on his plants outdoors. Exactly. So yep. it's being used, right? You're not wasting that water. But yeah, what is it? For every gallon, you, it's draining out three gallons or something like that? It, it's it's kind of crazy. It's from one to one all the way up to one to five. So it's depending on what your base water going in and what you want coming out. And a lot of people are chasing for that zero. And you can get a, a, you can get a one to one and come out with like a 10, like a, rather than a zero, come out with like a 10 ppm, which in my opinion is even better because you can't use pH pens in our water. It breaks your pH pen. And so many people do it and, and then they come back, why is my Blue Labs pH pen all uncalibrated? And you're like, it's because the RO water, and it says right in the manual, it cannot be used in RO water. So they always recommend put a little bit of CalMag in your RO water before using the pH. But if you already start with like a 10, not the zero, you have a little bit of minerals in there for the ion exchange in your uh, your uh, pH meter, and it works. It doesn't cause any problems. Most of these RO systems aren't actually stripping it down to zero ppm anyways. Like mine, I think, is, uh, you know, I've had some that went down to 20 ppm, 40 okay. ppm. I think 8 ppm is what I measured recently. Okay. So I do have the ability to, I know exactly what you mean though, right? It's like, mm-hmm. even with uh, ppm meters, it, you're, it's not going to read it properly, right? Exactly, exactly. This clip is brought to you by AC Infinity. Use discount code MrGrow at 15 to save on any of their products. 
Thank you.